So now uh, it's your turn to do some work. And at your tables, we're going to take about 20 minutes to focus on at least two, if you can, of these questions. What we found in Wellington yesterday was that um, depending on how deeply you want to go into the questions that you decide on, you might actually only get through one, and that's just fine. But take at least one of these questions, if you can, and really interrogate it with the group of people at your table and unpick it. And think carefully um, what there will be different people from different organisations at your table, but collectively, can you land on some really big ticket items that, that jump out at all of you for what this um, playbook means for your businesses and your organisations. What would you want to start applying? What do you think is most important for your business to take from the research and start trying to apply um, first, if anything? And are you already reflecting? What, what is there comfort that you take from this research? Is there comfort that you take from this work? Because you think, actually, I think we are landing this, some of this already. Um, and, and if you are, what would be the next step? So you have, about, you have about 15 minutes to think about which of those questions you'd like to focus on in the group at your table, and then we'll come back and feed back. For those of you who are sitting in the comfort of your own pyjamas at home, perhaps, um, take a break. Well, think about this from your own perspective. Right. Thank you very much, everyone. Very animated conversations, and everybody looks deeply in conversation, uh, which means that you must have found lots to talk about. So. We're going to do a quick wrap up over the next sort of uh, seven or eight minutes and then and then Alison is going to come back and, and have a bit of a chat about where to from here. So I'm going to pick randomly, I'm going to pick this table over here to tell us which of the question or questions they concentrated on and what were your key outtakes. Okay, we made a terrible mistake at the outset. Um, <laughs> By, by trying to table what this actually meant to each of us ah. and our organisations. And we spent that whole time <laughs> trying to come to a place of commonality. Right. But what, what did overlap was that anxiety is real mm -hmm. and it is a tension in every single individual's life and every business that we've talked about here today mm -hmm. that... It is incumbent on our businesses to find a means of relieving that anxiety. Mm -hmm. And in the case mm. of our business, our wine New Zealand, we make glass containers. It is how do we find the community who tell us what they actually need. So if you're talking mindful consumerism, my fruit and veg requirement for the day, my legal drinking limit, how do our containers help our customers deliver on that for the consumer? Mm -hmm. In Jerry's business, it is how does he work with CEOs down and employees up and actually get to a point where he is helping them create a vision that is not just internal, mm -hmm. that actually takes in all those externalities. Mm -hmm. Denise is just starting with the EMA as their GM. So it is how does she actually develop their strategy based on what she's heard today. She's been in the job three weeks. Go, Denise. Go, Denise. No GM pressure. Of the, I'm not GM of the whole no. Kate and Alida are both embedded in businesses that have been extremely engaged in this piece of work. So it's how they facilitate and help businesses like ours, individuals like us. That's where we got to. Didn't answer one of your questions. Thanks for your time. <laughs> a bloody good answer. <laughs> Proving the individualism thing there. Penny, thank you very much. Okay, I'm going to, down the back, here at the table that's, oh, that Nicola's like at. Lucky Nicola's Mike at. Okay. All right. So we have a client service organisation here in Right Communications. And then we also have Environmark Solutions. Ah. So we're all very client focused. Yes. And we immediately obviously think of our clients. Yes. 
but we thought let's just make it a bit more challenging and focus on ourselves for once. Um, <laughs> And what came through is how important the internal culture is. Mm -hmm. And so when mm. you look at the questions, for us it was really about how do we live and breathe mm. the playbook in our, in our policies at work. And one of the things, you know, everyone loves pets. Who knew? Um, so one of the things, you know, having pets at work is quite a big thing in some organisations just to make mm -hmm. life at work a little bit more um, happy. Um, give people some me time to interact with that pet and, and generally just create a nicer, more friendly workplace. Um, the experience piece is big as well. So how do you create opportunities to bring family and friends into your workplace? And mm. if that's, you know, that's quite fulfilling for people. Um, we have a far now day and that's something that isn't a day, it's actually more of a philosophy, but I think lots of workplaces are like that. And I think as there is a lot of anxiety around, you know, balance of work life, um, working mums, working dads, there is um, emphasis on how do, we, how do we create a workplace that is open and flexible. Mm. So that was just a, a conversation. Um, and there's one super cool thing that Environmark Solutions does for its clients when they become carbon neutral, certified carbon neutral, they actually share that experience with staff. So there mm. might be a project champion who's worked really closely with, with Environmark Solutions on sourcing the data and, and so forth. But the rest of the team may not know mm. what it's all about. They might have some questions they're grappling with. So when you receive your certification, Environment Solutions will come into your workplace and they put on morning tea for you in your own workplace and they take questions and take you through the process. Nice. So I thought that was a really great experience. That's great. Thank you. Okay, I think we've got time for one more. What about over the back here? How did you, how did you guys go? Uh, we were very similar to the first group where oh. we had a lot of different debate and discussion. Um, we're all quite different in our backgrounds. So we have consumer entertainment and then um, banking and energy services. Mm. Um, I think probably um, on my side of the table, we were the least evolved around the messaging of what we do to our consumers. Um, and I think we have a really high focus on product marketing opposed to brand marketing, uh, mostly because it's that, um, what we talked about, that instant impact on our ROI and the investment. So for me, I, I'm still struggling with tools to help me show long-term or medium-term ROI from brand. Um, there's no direct correlation to that monthly pickup in sales when you do mm. a really good brand campaign, but we know it works. I guess it's just how do how do we sell that into the general managers and the board when it comes to investing in brand, which is expensive. Mm. So that's kind of um, the struggle. I think I probably face more on this table than anyone else. <laughs> Fantastic, thank you. Any other tables who are busting to share? the outcomes of the conversation that you had? What do you know? Yes, yes, excellent. One thing that we shared here. Hang on. One thing that we shared here, uh, we've got EcoStore, um, Brave Gen and Contact around this table. Mm -hmm. And um, it was really, you know, the whole human side of that conversation mm. is very, very new concept, I think, um, for most <laughs> <Renew>. businesses, <laughs> if I can generalise that a little. <laughs> Thanks, uh, um, so it's really just um, for us. It was even going. How the hell does that fit? Um, mm. What do we? What? How do we communicate that? Mm. For for on my side of the fence, um, Steve and I, um, uh, for contact, it's really going. Well, how do you? How do you um, communicate that in a way across an organisation as large as ours? Right. To have a collective conversation that's going to be more human. Mm. You know, you've got CSRs to business account managers to mm. senior leaders to boards to CEOs to engineers to technicians to service contractors uh, and on and it goes. Yes. Um, and, uh, you know, it's not a product per se, it's a thing inside your meter box. Um, so, so, how do we have those 
sustainability conversations with with our customers, and we shared that too in terms of uh, eco, mm. you know, store, and they've got a great sustainability conversation. But it's even just the semantics yes. around um, sustainability. So, and I was just saying that if I just read the bottom line of one of these, uh, you know, sheets here, and it said, you know, the sustainability sustainability business council. I mean, to me, it's having sustainable sales or sustainable mm. business in terms of having more long-term sustainable ROI or any of those sorts of things. Yet in the context of this, it's making the human part of how does New Zealand become more sustainable and how do we you know, eliminate and waste and all those other different conversations. So it's even making the conversation mm. with people in a way that they can understand it. Yes. Because you could say one word and it means five different things to people. That's right. Yeah. I think the, um, that's a fantastic um, opening for me to, uh, to, to close this workshop part of, the, part of the session by saying what really speaks to me is that about this, the playbook is that it gives us our out. We don't actually have to find a way to talk about sustainability in a way that human beings, i.e. Our, our customers and our consumers and the people that we're doing business with or, and for, we don't have to find a way to talk about it anymore. We don't have to angst about how do we describe sustainability because actually what this is showing us is that the good life for New Zealanders is a sustainable life. It's about experiences, it's about simplicity, it's about not much that is the kind of consumerism that we're, that we're all, um, you know, we've been focused on as part of a capitalist society for so long. And actually, this gives us a perfect out. It means that we don't actually have to worry about how we describe sustainability anymore. Because if we put the good life at the centre of the way that we are expressing as brands and as businesses, we're going to be doing okay anyway, and we're going to be showing what it means to, to have a sustainable lifestyle, which is to have the good life in the way that New Zealanders are already thinking about it. So actually, this is a fantastic um, affirmation for all of us, and it kind of relieves us of the pressure of having to talk about sustainability anymore. That's, that's my take on it, and it's a huge relief. And, you know, I've, uh, we've said for, for a while that the irony is that the more high-tech and the more high-everything that our, um, our world gets, actually, um, the easier it is to remind ourselves that in the end, we're a human economy. And this gives us the excuse to get back to putting the human right at the centre. And wow, what a great break. It's like back to the future. <laughs> so thank you very much for your ideas and for participating. And I hope you, you found it useful sharing with the people at your table. And I'm going to hand back over to Ali because she's going to talk to us about what next. Thanks so much for all the discussion you had and the great feedback. Uh, I think it's just... Fantastic to be in a room together talking about how to bring humans back into it. And it's us, the humans, talking about that because we're going to be the ones who are going to lead this. So, And thank you to the panel. That was some fantastic insights there as well. Uh, just a couple of quick security housekeeping things. Uh, I've just been reminded, if anybody doesn't want to appear in any photos uh, that we would put on Twitter or our web page, just uh, let me or, or Jay know and um, we'll just make sure that you don't appear that way. The other thing also is this is, uh, the playbook is the first resource we've developed that's properly on lockdown for members. Uh, we, we're not gonna have sort of passwords and codes everywhere, but we ask everyone to uh, be mindful of the hard copies that you've got here and the soft copies that we'll send you afterwards are actually just right now for our members to share. Uh, because there's something very valuable in this that we want to work with yourselves and help you get uh, and work through how it's going to work across the different sectors and sizes and types of businesses in our, in our membership base as well. Um, and that will help us make sure it's most valuable for you on what the next steps are. So on that, uh, this isn't just a report that we say, here you go, good luck. Um, anyone who knows me well knows that I don't stop at one thing and I'm, I'm fairly persistent. So we're just as keen about what comes next and how we can develop this and help make it real and valuable for you all. So one idea that's been in discussion recently is we've had a, a couple of uh, the agencies 
in our membership calling you saying, am I allowed to use this with clients who aren't members, which is a great question. And, you know, we, I think we'll talk through that with that. And likewise, we've had members saying, am I able to use this with agencies who aren't in your membership? And um, I think those questions coming to us tells us that there's a need for us to work with members and their agencies about how we can use this in a way that helps the everybody's case of where they want to, the business case for using it, as well as how it can be implemented with the sort of the intent that's behind it. Um, so we're gonna be talking to lots of you about how we do that next step and create a forum or different interactions. Um, we also would like to start developing some case studies around this. And it wouldn't be a, a mission accomplished style case study. It would be something that we would like to talk to a few, get a few members to uh, have some posts or some kind of communications about how they're starting off. Who are they, what, what inspired them to, what was the one thing that they thought they're gonna start off with? Who did they talk to? Um, what was the challenge that, that came up? And just how it develops and how it sort of rolls out and expands within a business and with their relationships. So we'll be approaching a few people um, and feel free to approach us too if you think you wanted to know more about that or see what might work for you. Um, I'm really privileged to be going to the Sustainable Brands flagship conference in Detroit in June, uh, which there'll be a lot of international leaders on uh, more topics around consumers and brands than I can, I can mention. But um, I'll be in, the, in Detroit with hundreds of other people who are doing things in this area or associated areas um, and ideas about you know, different viewpoints, different kinds of markets, um, different ways that internal culture and brand expression is, is mixing out in the world. Uh, so one, I would love to have got a few, couple of case studies under our belt by then to be able to tell others about it as well as talk to them about any other kind of leadership in this area. So come tell me if you think that there's something there, um, just a bit of a hook to, to see who wants to, to be taken out there, um, as well as while I'm there, I'll be keen to hear the kinds of things people want to know. If there is um, a leader in something or a, a business or a company who's doing something leading, let me know what you wanna know and I'll see if I can um, talk to them. We, may roll this out to other businesses later in this year. It really depends how we go with using it with members first, who, where this ends up getting traction, um, how, the, how it phases over time. But we may do that um, at, at which time we'll talk with all of you about how we can do that so that we can still show leadership from the membership within that. Um, and again, this not being a good luck, see you later, we would want to do some other sessions with members uh, there's all sorts of ways that could look like, and you'll all have some different kinds of needs around that. So please do come and tell me what you think would be useful for SBC to do for you or your stakeholders or your um, industry associations and others to, to help you um, work with this. Um, that's pretty much it. Thank you very much to the Pioneer Group, those members that helped us um, throughout in the development of this. Thank you very much to the venue here. Thank you very much, Jacqueline Smart and Liz Reed, for all your guidance uh, and advice over time as we develop this. And a uh, big thank you to my project partner, Grant Bell. Uh, <laughs> we've, we've had a lot of fun going through this and now pretty much start off most of our conversations about which moments we've experienced recently, highlights, lowlights, and um, what we've done in our lives to help us get more of those moments that we like. So, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Definitely taking a break up there. Uh, and thank you all very much for coming today and thank you live stream viewers for, your, for uh, watching today and for your great questions. And uh, feel free to uh, um, enjoy some lunch, keep the conversation going and uh, look forward to chatting with you about this more.